it's time for a little upgrade. This is a ESX CLI technique, not VMware Update Manager, which not everyone uh, necessarily has. So even people with a free hypervisor can do this, where you're basically pasting one command in. So yeah, a lot of words here, but most people are actually literally just pasting this one liner in. A lot of the other stuff in here will be optional. All right, so on the left, you can see I've got the local interface of the server up, and it's got the build version. Over here on the right, we're going to go to build 7388607. So PuTTY is probably a pretty good place to start. Now i got to point out this article covers, hey, uh, some prerequisites. Backup first. Yep, I've got backups. Uh, you can actually make an image of your USB media, by the way. And I get into all the advantages and drawbacks to this particular technique that I'm showing in this video. So here's the prerequisites. You'll want to read the release notes and all that good stuff. And you should do backup. All right, here's the actual upgrade. If you forgot how to enable SSH, turn it on. Uh, maintenance mode, make sure you don't have any VMs running on there that you care about too much. All right, and then firewall. Generally, you don't need this anymore. It depends on when you built your ESXi host, but I want to be applicable to the greatest number of people possibly watching this video. So I think I'll just leave that in there for now. So I'm going to get Putty going here. And there we go, Putty. Oh, why is that not coming up? Oh, that was slow. All right. So the system was just rebooted, so I guess that's probably what it was. Hard to say. All right, what's next? If we swipe our mouse across this, sure, or I can triple click it, and then even the carriage returns in there. So I literally just right click, it issues the command, and we're back. Triple click, control C to get in the clipboard, and this one I want it to be nice and large. I don't want some like word wrap issues messing up how the screenshot looks. Because I do screenshots of this kind of stuff when I'm done, and it gets used in the article. So that takes a little while. It's pulling the bits from the internet. Depends on the speed of your media. In my case, it's a USB 32 gig drive. And hey, like I warn people, you may have a driver in there that it's about to replace. So it gives you a little warning. So that's why this step says, hey, person watching this video, you may or may not get this warning. If you do, you now got to say, I'm okay with removing it. See how that's appended on the end there? All right, so let's do that again. Double click, control C, right click, paste, and darn, I made it too short and I ended up with a word wrap issue. Little bit frustrating. Oh well. So I'm gonna let that finish. This time, it's not just checking the media for drivers and all that, and what's gonna happen, kind of a dry run it did there but it's actually pulling the bits from the web this time too. So it's gonna take a, a minute or two. Again, depends on your internet connection and the speed of your USB thumb drive or wherever else you have your ESXi hypervisor actually installed. So now we just patiently wait for this to finish. Okay, so that finished up. Let's continue here. What else is in the article? Well, if you have a ZND, there's some more stuff. Other systems, you may lose some drivers, right? It warned us it's gonna remove stuff. So let's follow along the article. So I do have 10 gig networking. Triple click, right click, paste. So you are gonna to need to pull that VIB to your local drive and then point to the path to install that VIB. For my convenience, I've got it at this, uh, URL at the moment. All right, I'm going to want to update this particular line because 4.5.3 is actually out, so it looks like I missed that. Okay, that worked. Got the latest driver. And then finally, um, if you have an Intel opt-in, may need this driver. 
I do not have it installed at the moment. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, by the way, the inbox included NVMe driver you don't want to remove, and it works for Samsung or Intel products, uh, probably Micron as well, I believe. Um, but if you want a little better speed, you want the Intel NVMe driver that's specifically meant for Optane or whatever other Intel device you might have. Okay. And then the firewall rules, put them back where they were before we started, paste that in, and we're good. Not quite ready to reboot because I've got to uh, grab all this in the clipboard. So I'm going to do that now. Get that over on my other screen to include in the article. That's kind of a log of what just happened. And grab a screenshot at the moment. Okay, I'm back and ready to reboot. Now, of course, a reboot means the service console and everything else is going to go down, as well as any connections I have to this host. But because I took the time to give it a 10 gig driver, uh, I should be fine. Now, I'm going to point out there's also this optional step of the i350. I'm going to see how the new driver goes that's in this bundle. And because I actually took care of grabbing an archive of what I had, let's see if we have ourselves a new version of that. So I'm going to go and do a search. And here it is. The boot bank is now 55011. Okay, so it doesn't look like that changed. 4106, yeah, it's the same. So nothing changed. Um, if you don't have trouble with your ETH0 and ETH1 swapping or something on your 12 core system, I wouldn't worry about this step. Again, that's optional. But for full support at one point, VMware support told me, yeah, for the i350 chip, you're not supposed to use the inbox driver. You're actually fully supported if you go ahead and install this driver. So again, that's optional. So that's about it for this video. It's um, rebooting now. We should see in the interface here. Whoa, okay. I booted from a different device. So I'm going to have to go ahead and make sure I reboot from ESXi this time around. And once it's up, I'll just make sure my ESXi host client shows the new build number. All right, that'd be one step. And um, just make sure everything acts normal, networking and so forth. Okay, I'm back. Console's up. We see the build number looks good. 88607, if we look at the top here. There it is. 8738-8607. Cool. Now, time to log in to the host client, meaning pointing our browser straight to that particular server, and have a look at things. Now, this is a Xeon D. And again, because of that 10 gig networking not being included with VMware's E6i, you want to make sure that you see enabled and full duplex and all that. So looking good from a physical NIC perspective. Another thing you might want to check out would be monitor hardware events. And we've got RPMs and fans, temperature, all that showing. All right, and that's because of an article I have here that talks about a fix for that. So upgrading did not affect that. This article still stands true that with this simple set of commands, you get full health monitoring correctly. Uh, it was supposed to be soon um, that ESXi was gonna have this fixed for all ZND owners, baked right into the ESXi, but apparently just not in this build. So this particular build, patch two doesn't quite have it. Let's hope the next release has a fix where you won't need this article anymore. All right, so that's that's a wrap. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.